Hi guys, it's Ray. Um, today we're going to do something we've done a bunch of times. We're just going to do some wood grain. I've got three barrel tumblers that I have to get done, so um, I'm not going to go through the entire process of them. But um, for these ones, I'm going to use teakwood, butterscotch, and ginger, all from Tim Holtz. I like to start with the lightest. And I'm not going to make you watch me do all three of these. I'll put it in fast mode after the first one. Um, but I usually work my lightest color to my darkest when I'm layering a bunch of colors. And I just run a line. And my preferred method is a chip brush. Chip brushes are very cheap. I use the same one for quite a long time. Um, long enough that the store that this one came from was AC Moore and they've been out of business for almost two years now, so. Um, my only suggestion if you're reusing your chip brushes is don't take one that has super dark ink on it and reuse it on a cup that you want to stay light because you can reactivate the inks on these brushes. So, and because I'm layering in three colors here, I'm not going for full coverage on the first. Um, this is a very flat spray paint. Getting white here has been um, not good. So, Plus, it was 30 degrees out when I base coated these, so, you know. They should still work fine, but there might not be as much play in the ink. And don't forget the bottom. So, that's one color. And then I just move on to the next. If you have lines that run around like that one just did, make sure you turn your cup and get them fairly quick. I don't always grab the same colors. I mix it up. The only brown I truly avoid more often than not is the espresso. Sometimes that one will turn green. Sometimes it'll turn back and sometimes it will not. So I tend to stay away from it more. And you'll see me going down sideways and then brushing back over the top sometimes. You just gotta kind of develop a technique that works for you. I'm doing the barrel tumblers the whiskey barrel tumblers are pretty popular for men. I get my barrels from Makerflow Crafts. These are the last three I have in the house. So these will be my last three until after the new year. And then now I'm gonna go through and everywhere there's any white left. I'm going to focus on filling with the darkest color, the teakwood. You can build dimension with a single color. I just prefer using two or three. In fact, maybe the next one, I'm going to do it in fast mode, but maybe the next one I'll just do with the teakwood. 
just to mix it up. No two of these will ever, ever, ever come out exactly the same. Just kind of looking around for any white spaces or any spaces I don't like. Um, I don't worry a lot about knots in the barrels. my last little bit of white on the top side. So at this point I'll just spin it around and make sure I'm happy with it. Tiny little white spot there. So I'm going to finish up the bottom, and then this one will be good. Um, this is obviously easier to do if you can turn it completely upright. Because you don't have to worry about it running around the sides as much. If it drips down the edge, make sure you pull it down. So that is one. I'm going to fix that where I just went a little wrong direction. And I'm going to go ahead and slip this into fast and do another one all with the teak wood. The third one, I don't know yet. Maybe I'll just do two. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I am ready to get some resin on these. Um, this was the one that was just the teak wood. This one had the ginger, the butterscotch, and the teak wood. The first one we did, and then 
this one just had the butterscotch and the ginger. That was the last one you saw me do. So you can see how different they look depending on what, what colors you use. So I'm gonna get these started. I have my resin mixed. These turners sit much higher because um, the double turners I got are pretty light on their own, but um, so I screwed them to a piece of wood when I modified them to work for my space and my arms. So. And I should have had enough mixed for all three of these, hopefully. And these have only been sitting for like 45 minutes. I, everybody debates the, do you seal your wood grains or not? I do not. I don't let them sit for 24 hours. I just move on with my day. I've only ever had a couple bleed or change colors. And I've had them bleed more when I've sealed them than when I haven't. So I am not a sealer. If you are a sealer, go ahead and do it your way. But personal preference is I don't. So, I need some more on this one. Let me grab this cup. I absolutely love how each one of these gets its own unique character. And yes, there are bubbles. Yes, I will torch this, but I'm gonna wait until I'm done with the third one and then torch all three at the same time. So just because I don't want to take my glove off yet. So these two are fully coated. I'm going to pause you one second and move this one out of the way. Okay, you'll be able to see all of this one because this turner sits lower to the table. So. And this is the lightest of the bunch. I have so many bubbles in my resin just because I used wooden stir sticks and the resin was still cool to begin with when I mixed it, so. That's all. One second and I will show you how I torch. I'm just gonna torch this one, the other two are over on the other side now, so um, I'm trying to do it off to the side. I don't get super close. I'll stay back. And usually just one pass, but this is super bubbly, so I am going to watch it and probably come back and give it another pass in like five to ten minutes 
although it does look like I'm getting the majority of them, so. That might not actually be necessary, but I will keep an eye on it. I'm gonna go torch the other three and I will be back. Okay, so I'm just decaling the last one of my barrels. So, I already have them cut. I'm going to have to adjust that a little bit, but we'll find out. I will show you all of these side by side in a minute. I am not going to put the top coat on them for you to see because It really doesn't matter. My opal's a little messed up. I'm going to go ahead and put a new one in there. Because I do have another one cut. without sticking the extra tea down that I just picked up as well. There, much better. Okay. And then I just lost my so I'm going to flip it over and run my stripes. I just hand place these randomly. I don't really worry much about it. They're supposed to be like aged imperfect barrels, so... And I do two at the top, two at the bottom. I don't know what size they are because I just don't. I could look at my file and tell you, probably. Two to go. <sighs> I keep picking up dog hairs on my string here. I gotta make sure I get them before I put the resin on. dog is shutting like crazy and even though he doesn't come in this room it tracks 
he's a golden retriever, so furry. Okay, and the last thing this gets is these little circles. I just cut these from brass, silver, copper, whatever, whatever metallic I can find at the time. And I just do three on each band. Sometimes I do four, but today I'm doing three. Two sets towards the front and one dead center on the back where my overlaps are. So I won't say dead center, but centered on the back where my overlaps are. Hides that a little bit. So, that's the decals. I'm going to bring the others back in so you can see them all together. There's the lightest, there's the medium, and this one is the darkest. So, one color three colors, two colors. Just so you can have an idea of how different they can look depending on how you layer and how many colors you layer. So that's it. Thank you for watching.